the Greek god Poseidon, god of the sea, earthshaker, lord of horses, and a piece of shit. Whilst most shy from telling his full tale, we delve into the depths of Poseidon's story, exploring his origins, powers, and complicated legacy in Greek mythology. Welcome to the Mysteries of Mythology, Poseidon. Depending on the source, the birth of Poseidon has two stories. The first in the swirling chaos of ancient myth, where the Titan Kronos, fearful of a prophecy that he would be overthrown by his children, swallowed each of them at birth, including Poseidon. In this version, Poseidon was the second eldest of Kronos and Rhea's children, swallowed and fated to wait in their father's stomach until his wife Rhea, with the help of Zeus, poisoned Kronos and regurgitated his children. But a lesser known story was that like his younger brother Zeus, Poseidon was destined for a different fate. His mother Rhea, desperate to save her son, cunningly swapped Poseidon with a horse or a colt, hiding away the infant god on the island of Rhodes. Kronos, thinking he ate Poseidon, was instead eating a colt. How he couldn't tell the difference is one of the mysteries of mythology. Perhaps he was very hungry. Whatever the reason, this act of maternal defiance allowed Poseidon to join his brother in the revolt against Kronos and set Poseidon on a path to godhood. After their victory over the Titans and establishing themselves as the gods of Olympus, Zeus, Hades and Poseidon played a game of pulling the short straw, which Zeus cheated with, and Poseidon won dominion over the vast and tempestuous sea. Poseidon took his position and realm with enthusiasm, building an incredible palace of gold and gems on the seabed. Although most stories of the ancient Greek gods gravitate to Zeus, the king of gods, it's thought that the everyday ancient Greeks were often more conscious of the god of the sea. If we think back to ancient Greece, their cities were concentrated along the coastlines and surrounded by islands, so their world was either divided or connected by sea, depending on the mood of the sea god. Plato wrote about the Greeks and said, We who live between the pillars of Heracles and Phasis inhabit some small part of it around the sea, just like ants or frogs around a pond. As the Greeks looked out upon the endless waters, they saw in them the mood of Poseidon, at times serene and nurturing, at others fierce and unforgiving. His power extended far beyond the waves, influencing the most important parts of their lives, seafaring commerce and the fortunes of cities that stood by the sea's edge. In the Bronze Age, this reverence for Poseidon was palpable. He was not just a deity of the waters, but a symbol of the Mediterranean civilization's lifeblood. The sea was a pathway for trade, a source of sustenance, and, and at the heart of many myths and legends, Poseidon, with his trident in hand, was both feared and respected as the sovereign of this blue expanse. During the Titanomachy, Zeus freed the Cyclopses from Tartarus. They had been trapped there by Uranus, the primordial god of the sky, who, like his son Kronos, had heard a prophecy that his children would overthrow him. The Cyclops were skilled craftsmen, and to help the Olympian gods in the war, they gifted Zeus with thunder and lightning, Hades with a helmet of invisibility, and Poseidon with the trident. The trident, a common tool used by fishermen in their trade, is made from the word that means three teeth. His trident was more than a mere symbol, it was a conduit of his power. With a mere strike to the earth, he could summon tidal waves and even cause earthquakes that rattled the foundations of the world. But Poseidon's domain was not limited to turmoil and destruction. He was also a creator, shaping islands and calming seas to aid sailors on their voyages. He's always pictured holding his trident, traveling the oceans on the back of his chariot, pulled by hippocamps, half-horse and half-fish creatures. Horses are one of the commonly related animals to Poseidon, 
and we'll talk about this a little later, but he's also associated with dolphins and other sea creatures in his rule over the sea. This is perhaps a good time to address a common confusion about who the god of the sea was. It's sometimes said that Poseidon shared his rule with Pontus, a primordial god. But as a primordial, Pontus was the sea, and Poseidon ruled over it. One of Poseidon's titles was the Lord of Horses. Depending on the source and version, here are a few reasons why. As we saw before, his transportation creature of choice was half horse, half fish. Another of the reasons was to impress and seduce his sister Demeter. We'll talk more about Poseidon's disturbing relationships later. In this story, Poseidon thought that creating a wonderful creature would impress Demeter. He struck the earth with his trident, and each time a creature rose from the earth. The first creatures weren't impressive, but on the final try, he created a beautiful and noble creature, the horse. There are other stories, such as a competition with his niece Athena. In a competition to win the patronage of the city of Cecropia, Athena and Poseidon offered gifts to the citizens. In some versions, this gift was a horse, but a more popular account of the story says that he offered a salty stream. Athena offered the city the olive tree, which gave wood, oil, and fruit. The men of the city preferred Poseidon's gift, suspecting he would be a bad loser. The women overwhelmingly preferred Athena's gift, who won the competition, and the city was renamed Athens. As the men suspected, Poseidon acted like a spoilt brat and flooded the city. I'm not sure if I've said this before, but Poseidon was a complete <laughs> The one thing that differed Zeus from Poseidon was that while both brothers were actively engaged in non-consensual sex with mortals, gods, gods in animal form and family members, Zeus was strongly against killing worshippers. Prayer was the source of Zeus's power. So when his tumultuous brother began killing worshippers, Zeus decided to find Poseidon a wife to quell his rage. In the classic Zeus way, this choice was made by force. Zeus forced Nerus, the previous ruler of the sea, to offer one of his beautiful sea nymph daughters to Poseidon. And Poseidon, being Poseidon, chose the daughter that didn't want to marry him the Nerid Amphitrite. At first, Amphitrite refused the union, so Poseidon sent a smooth-talking dolphin to convince her that he was worthy of being a good husband, which apparently worked. It's perhaps this disinterest in Poseidon that explains why Amphitrite didn't much care about many of the future affairs her husband had. But despite all his affairs, he also found time to have children with his wife. Their most famous offspring was Triton, a merman with the upper body of a human and the tail of a fish. Triton lived with his parents in a golden palace beneath the sea and was known for his role as a herald and messenger of the deep. He was often depicted blowing a conch shell, which was said to calm or raise the waves. They also had two other children. Rhodos, the personification of the island of Rhodes, and Benthesikime, associated with the seas off the coast of Africa. I'll not go into all the affairs, but the number of children is said to be around a hundred. I'll put a few of the most famous on the screen to read in your own time. Not that it absolves Poseidon from his many affairs, but one of the most famous stories that involved Poseidon's animosities was when he allegedly forced himself on a virgin priestess in the temple of Athena. That priestess was Medusa, but earlier versions of the story show this not to be true. In the version by poet Hesiod, Medusa was a willing partner. He wrote that they laid together in a soft meadow and among spring flowers. But if we go back earlier, the ancient Greeks believed that Medusa was always a Gorgon monster and that Poseidon never touched her. One of the most mind-boggling affairs of Poseidon was with his sister Demeter. 
When Demeter was looking for her lost daughter Persephone, Poseidon found her walking alone on a beach. Instead of offering to help her or comfort her, he tried to sleep with her. To escape his advances, Demeter transformed into a horse. But being the lord of horses, Poseidon transformed into a strong stallion, chased her, and impregnated her with the black-winged horse deity Arion and Despoina, the goddess of frost. As well as a terrible husband, Poseidon wasn't a great brother either. Together with Hera, Apollo, and Athena, Poseidon tried to overthrow Zeus. Whilst Zeus slept, they tried to bind him in chains. But one of Zeus's attendants, Thedas, called for help from the hundred-handed beast, the Hecaton Cares. When the other gods heard the Hecaton Cares approaching, they fled, but Zeus caught them and punished them. He hung Hera with the same chain she had tried to trap him in, and hung her from a void filled with horrors. Poseidon and Apollo were sentenced to a year of serving as mortals. Their master was the mortal king Laomedon of Troy, a mean and cunning ruler. During their year of servitude, Poseidon and Apollo were tasked with the building of the mighty walls of Troy. With their divine strength gone, this task was both grueling and demeaning. But they completed the walls, a structure that would later play a central role in the Trojan War. After completing the wall, King Laomedon refused to pay them their due wages. He even threatened to cut off their hands and sell them into slavery if they dared to ask for their reward again. Laomedon had gravely underestimated who he was dealing with. Once their year was up and their powers restored, Poseidon and Apollo were not ones to let such an affront go unpunished. Apollo, with a single arrow, unleashed a devastating plague upon Troy, striking down citizens, soldiers, and statesmen alike. The plague ravaged the city, leaving despair and death in its wake. Poseidon, not to be outdone, called forth a monstrous sea creature from the depths of the ocean, this creature terrorized the coast, preying upon the Trojans, particularly those who dared to find any semblance of joy amidst their suffering. King Laomedon wasn't the only one to feel Poseidon's vengeance. One such tale is the legendary feud between Poseidon and the hero Odysseus. After the blinding of Polyphemus, Poseidon's Cyclopean son, the god's wrath was ignited he cursed Odysseus to a perilous, decade-long odyssey across the treacherous seas, showcasing both his vengeful nature and his control over the fate of sailors. The creation of the Minotaur, too, falls within Poseidon's realm of influence. King Minos, to prove his divine right to the Cretan throne, prayed to Poseidon for a sign. The god obliged, sending a magnificent white bull from the sea. But when Minos failed to sacrifice the bull as promised, Poseidon's retribution was swift and terrible, leading to the birth of the Minotaur, a creature both fascinating and fearsome in the annals of Greek mythology. If you want to hear the gory details, watch my Minotaur video. Poseidon, still a bitter ex-contractor, was also to meddle in the affairs of the war between the Greeks and the Trojans. Disguised as a mortal, he'd stroll into the Greek camps, firing up the troops with pep talks that would put any motivational speaker to shame. Think ancient Greek Tony Robbins, but with more seaweed. However, Poseidon's support for the Greeks wasn't just about payback. He had this complex relationship with Zeus. While Zeus was neutral in the battle, Poseidon saw an opportunity to flex his independence, stirring the pot in the mortal world. But after the Greeks won Troy, Poseidon's tune changed. It seems he wasn't a fan of their victory celebration. Poseidon felt the whole sacking, looting and general unsportsmanlike conduct was a step too far. The Greeks were plagued with treacherous seas on their return and the hero, Odysseus, was cursed to wander the seas for ten years, facing numerous trials and challenges before he could return home to Ithaca. Either despite or because of Poseidon's fickle personality, 
he was still highly worshipped by the ancient Greeks. Across the coastline, his altars and temples stood as testaments to his mighty power, serving not just as places of worship, but also as beacons for those braving the unpredictable seas. In Athens, despite being edged out by Athena in the famous contest for the city's patronage, Poseidon was held in high esteem. The magnificent temple of Poseidon at Sunion, overlooking the Aegean Sea, stands as a striking homage to his enduring influence. This architectural marvel symbolized the Greeks' reverence for Poseidon, a gesture of respect to the deity they once spurned in favor of an olive tree. Poseidon's cultural impact, however, extended beyond mere worship. He was a symbol of the untamed, unpredictable forces of nature. Festivals like the Posidea were not just religious ceremonies, but also a reflection of the Greeks' intricate relationship with the sea, a blend of fear, respect, and necessity integral to their daily lives. What's the final verdict on Poseidon? Was he just a divine bully with a trident or a complex god dealing with a lot of family drama? As we resurface from the depths of Poseidon's story, we've seen it all. The good, the bad, and the downright scandalous. From calm seas to earth-shaking tantrums, his influence rippled through every aspect of ancient Greek life. What do you think of Poseidon? Let me know in the comments.